Even a little bit bigger this time around. Georgia, Florida, Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the Bulldogs and the Gators, uh, both ranked in the top 10 for the first time since 2008. We bring in uh, Jackie Franchuli from uh, Gators Territory. You can catch her on Rivals platform right there for Florida football. Jackie, how are you doing today? I'm great, Mark. How are you doing? Doing well, doing well. Looking forward to this one. I don't question this being the number one marquee matchup of our weekend in college football, 3.30 Eastern time on Saturday. So Georgia expected to be in this place. Maybe they expected to be undefeated at this point, and Georgia fans a little bit disappointed about the showing at LSU, but they're in prime position to win the SEC East. They both can do it. Obviously, uh, it's an oddity that Kentucky actually holds the the uh, control of the East in a certain measure right now with a win head-to-head -head over Florida, but what to you has been the difference between Florida football based on national expectations coming into this season, which were in the seven and five, eight and four range versus being able to be in this position right now? I, I think that Kentucky game was really eye-opening for this team. I think, you know, if you look back in the Kentucky game, the the men in the trenches were being out physical and Kentucky was pretty much running all over them um on both sides of the ball and i think that game kind of opened their eyes a bit to how much more they needed to accomplish um dan mullen said that this team uh, did not practice to its full capacity i think something that he said that they, they had to learn that they had to go harder in practice um it, it was a mental game that they needed to accomplish um and that's what happened in that kentucky game Men the mental side of it it, it kind of it, it was more like an epiphany um, and they just bought into what Dan Mullen was saying. I think that's where the transformation started. You can see that these guys were buying into whatever Mullen and his staff were saying, and they were performing at a higher level. And kudos to Mullen as well, because then he started moving these players to positions that you know suited them better. And that's something that we saw completely different from last year. You can look at Freddie Swain, the wide receiver last year. He was more of an outside receiver. This year, he's moved to the slot, and he's been great for Florida this year, and even as a returner as well. So that's what Mullen and his staff have done, because last year you can see that some of these players weren't performing to what the expect what the expectancy was when they came on campus after their recruitment. Some of these were real high-level recruits and then seemed to come on campus and not live up to any expectations. So Freddie Swain is one of those guys that came on campus um, did not perform for two years, but look at him now. He's shining under Dan Mullen's offense. Felipe Franks is another guy who slowly progressed under Mullen every single game. He's gotten better, and that's all you really want from a team under a first-year staff. But what Mullen has done is also done it in a team way where all these – little pieces are working well together and then getting the wins and finding different ways to win. And that's something where Mullen has really done well to accomplish that. I think that's the biggest thing that a lot of people don't see is a little steady progress because they don't see them every week. So those little progresses every single week, those little changes that Mullen does really has had a big effect. And that's why they're a top in the top 10 game right now. Yeah, I don't think anyone uh, discounted that uh, Dan Mullen would be a major fit, a really good fit in Gainesville based on a number of criteria, being in the SEC as a football head coach. Also, obviously, his stay in Gainesville before and his ability to work offenses and uh, develop quarterbacks, which had not been done, even though it was supposed to be the expectation under Jim McElwain as well. Um, it's it's almost a double a resume builder for Dan Mullen. Dan Mullen, not that he needs one at this point, but not that it just uh, the the Florida improvement on offense with Felipe Franks at quarterback, but also the the uh, stagnation there at Mississippi State that was expected to be a force in the West, and they're struggling specifically on offense. So, so Dan Mullen, the impact we expected maybe two or three years down the road, and it seems to be pretty immediate. Yeah, no question about it. And I, I think, like, again, it's it's about buying in. It's about taking these players and putting them in the best position in order for them to succeed. Like I said, Freddie Swain on offense and Chauncey Gardner-Johnson on defense. Last year, he was criticized heavily for missing a lot of tackles. And suddenly under Todd Grantham's system, he's in this star position and he's having a really good year. It's just a position that suits his talents better. So that's what this staff has been able to do is find those positions where the players that they have has been able to perform better. Um, you know, we, we were very 
critical about the former staff and their a lot of games because it seems like they were trying to take players and put them in positions um, where they fit their system, but not really changing the system in order to fit the players they had. And this staff is completely opposite. They've been adapting game by game and even how they approach a game. Um, has been very different. If you look at Mississippi State's game, the reason why Florida was able to win um, against a very talented defensive line, I, I think Mississippi State's one of the most talented defensive lines in the country, just depth-wise, the reason why they were able to beat them with an offensive line that was struggling was because they threw those quick, wide passes and you know did not sh show the offensive line's weaknesses. And then they adapted again against LSU. And that's where Florida has been good is Dan Mullen and his staff look at their players and say, okay, these are their strengths for this game against this, this team's weakness. So let's highlight that and hide those weaknesses. And I think that's what's been great is their adjustments, not even before the game, but also during the game as well. Like LSU, in the LSU game, Mullen admitted he was a little bit conservative at times on offense on offense and then suddenly in the second half they opened up the playbook a little bit more and you saw what can happen when Damon opens a playbook he uh, brings in a trick player too yeah, certainly in that Mississippi State game, uh, Dan Mullen not going for style points, but it was proved very effective over the grind of 60 minutes when you've got uh, Jeffrey Simmons and Montez Sweat, two of the best defensive ends in college football. You totally neutralize those guys when you just jump back and get the ball out of your hand and get it outside uh, before those guys can uh, cause havoc coming off the edge. Uh, Georgia, Florida. Of course, if we would strip off the labels, the expectations, everything we thought going into this season and just looked at the resumes, Florida's accomplished more. E even in the loss to Kentucky, at least their loss was um, not a beatdown. Very close game, one score game until a, a late uh, defensive score. Of course, the win over LSU where Georgia goes and loses by 20 points to LSU and Georgia, a void of a non-conference game of substance, hasn't beaten anyone. Um, and um, so, so seven and a half points, the spread right now, the last I checked with Georgia, higher in the rankings, but basically the resume goes with Florida right now. Yeah, and I agree. And, and that's why, Mark, I've been kind of hesitant in my predictions this week. You know, if you asked me three weeks ago, I would have said, oh, Georgia, hands down. But now when you look at it, you know, and, and you look closely to that Kentucky game, because everyone brings up that Kentucky, like, oh, Kentucky loss for Florida. And you know what? Kentucky is better than we got preseason. And they're still they're They're really, really talented. They're such a veteran group group. And Terry Wilson and Benny Snell are two talented players on offense. So when you look at that loss, you think, well, you know what? That loss wasn't bad, considering the fact that Florida did not have linebacker David Reese and they did not have defensive end CC Jefferson. So if you add those two players back on the roster in that game, it might be different. Um, so I, I think now when you look at that and you look at what Georgia has accomplished the last few weeks, you see a defensive line that uh, in Georgia that is very talented, no, no question about it, but the depth that there hasn't been what Kirby Smart wanted. Um, and also the fact that their run defense hasn't been exactly what Kirby Smart wanted. So if you look at that and you see Florida's run the run game has progressed every single game. You think, okay, all right, Florida establishes a run early, gives Felipe Franks time to throw the ball. This game could be in Florida's wheelhouse. Um, so today, like this morning, I was like, you know what? I, I think Florida could edge a win on here, especially because I give the edge to Florida special teams over Georgia special teams. Um, I think that's one of the areas that Dan Mullen was able to really change at Florida. You know, last last few years, you know, if there was a field goal or a punt, you know, I, I never felt like there it was kind of like a giveaway play uh, for Florida. But now every time you think, oh, they might block this field goal or they might block this punt because they have already this season. Um, so I think that's now when you think about it, I think Florida has the edge in a lot of areas. I think on the offense, I think Georgia has the edge. But then you look how Jake Frump performed against LSU. And you think if Kirby Smart is hesitant to put Justin Fields on the field as he was against LSU, maybe it, it kind of evens things out as well. Yeah, it's a situation where this uh, is fascinating about college football. The stars in the recruiting rankings definitely matter. They translate. But once we get into a football season, we can't necessarily pencil in, although maybe Alabama is an exception, Ohio State, Georgia, Clemson, the way it's supposed to go based on the recruiting rankings because there's just a fit involved. There's chemistry with specific teams, that group of players fitting with uh, each other, the 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 development of the players, the coaching, the the impact, and just the vibe, and the fit for that particular system and that particular group of players, 
that obviously the most talented teams typically win, but it doesn't always work. And we can use examples of that each and every week in college football. Now, looking at Felipe Franks, uh, how would you compare and contrast what we saw at the end of last season in regards to his play versus what he's improved on going into Georgia? Oh, he's a different quarterback completely from what we saw last year. Um, yes, he still needs to get better. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying he needs to go for Heisman's or anything like that. I think he still needs to get better. I think he needs to work on his progressions a little bit better. His decision making sometimes is questionable. You know, we've seen some missed time passes, um, specifically in his interceptions. Some of them are throwing a little bit late. Um, in the Kentucky loss, the reason, you know, they struggled offensively in that second half from when they were coming from behind was because he was straining he was pushing for plays that weren't there because he was a little you can say panicking a little bit because he wanted to come back but that did not happen against mississippi state that didn't happen against lsu when they were behind so you can already see a steady progress during the season when they were behind against lsu and mississippi state he wasn't forcing those throws he was going through his progressions a little better and he was trying to find the opportunities rather than force them that's something that happened last year a lot with felipe franks he was trying to force the throws and he was trying to make things happen that just wasn't there honestly um, so now he's a, he's a better quarterback in that regard, and you know he's you know he's got he's been he's been giving a, l a little more of a leash compared to last year. He's got more plays. Um, I think Michael P. Ryan joked this week that had maybe three or four run plays last year that his grandma was able to know what's going to happen on every single play. This year they expanded the playbook a little bit more and allowed Felipe Franks to play a bit. He's more of a willing runner this year. He's not going to be that running quarterback like Justin Fields. That's never going to happen. That's not his game. But he's a bit more of a willing runner this year. And I think the biggest thing, in my opinion, that Franks has been able to accomplish this year, he's been able to become a a stronger quarterback on the mental side of things. Um, I think that's uh, such a big part of being a quarterback is being strong mentally. And I think he's just having fun on the field. You know, when you went to Starkville, Mississippi, I, um, I always say the story is seeing him going out there warming up and then the, the crowd there during warmups was ringing their cowbells. And, you know, that could be an intimidating sight. You know, just being there warming up. He had his earbuds on. And he just came out, went, looked around, took out his earbuds out and just smiled and just took it all in. That's not a quarterback that's scared or intimidated by hostile environment. That's the quarterback that's enjoying the moment. And he's taking it all in. And that's been the difference with Felipe Franks. He's taking it all in. He's having fun. He's enjoying things with Dan Mullen. I think there's a gif out there with Dan Mullen kind of dancing around and kind of going like this with Felipe Franks. And that's the difference. There, there, he, he's, he's not stressed out. So it's like he's confident in, he's confident in himself and the coaching staff that they put them in the positions to succeed and the playmakers to succeed. And that makes a world of difference. Yeah, I can imagine from the visiting player standpoint, having been in Scott Field a number of times, uh, Wade Stadium at, at this point uh, for the, all the cowbells, uh, I've heard it uh, <laughs> dozens of times and uh, the annoyance uh, from the visiting okay. players, uh, you can either choose to be annoyed and to be intimidated or embrace it and that's uh, easier said than done. Uh, like most teams in the SEC and really around the country, there are the collection of rivals. So for Florida, of course, it's Tennessee, it's Florida State, it's Georgia. Which one in regards to uh, the, the specific or the unique vibe or atmosphere or the, the components of this rivalry do you point to that uh, make this one a little bit different? Uh, I, I think, you know, this is going to be my third of Florida Georgia rivalry game and it's always such a it's it's a kind of when you drive over the bridge in Jacksonville and you see all those fans there I think it's it's very different um the environment there is just incredible when you cross over that bridge um everyone is hyped up um you know it's it's right in between both teams like Jacksonville is, is a halfway there so a lot of the fans show up for this equally both Florida and Georgia. So there's not a lot of games like that. Not a lot of games where you can say it's like almost 50-50 when it comes to fans. Um, so that that in itself is awesome. You know, Dan Mullen said in an interview this week that um, as he's crossing over the bridge, you see a lot of people holding the uh, finger up. And he says it kind of depends on what team it is and which finger you're seeing. Um, so you can see that it's a very heated rivalry. Um, it's just an awesome environment to see, you know, obviously last year wasn't the best environment for Florida. 
um, a lot a lot of people expected a lot from this team and also the whole Jim McElwain situation um, it kind of died down but this year top 10 showdown you've got college game day you've got SEC nation I think it's the first time in a regular season game that both of them are on campus at the same time not in, in Jacksonville and that that in itself is going to rile up these players. Um, it, it's going to be a great sight to see. I've seen you know Gator Nation on Twitter been hyping this game up for two weeks. You've got the bye week, both of these fan bases to kind of rile up. Georgia trying to get back to winning ways. Florida trying to prove themselves. It's kind of like us against the world type of mentality because they, everyone they think no one's respecting them yet. So it'll be a fun matchup. I think I think the fans make it. I, I really do. Jackie, joining us from the uh, rival site for Florida football Gators territory. Jackie, like you, I can't decide on this one. We both need to pull the trigger at some point today. We're going to direct everyone to rivals, and, and you're going to be able to, to make that decision at some point today. You're going to have to. Yes, yes. We have a prediction story today um, that all of our staff members will always predict. You know, um, after the Mississippi State game where I chose Mississippi State over Florida, I was eating crow for a couple of weeks. I've still, I still get a lot of our subscribers telling me I was wrong in that game. Um, but yeah, so we will make our predictions this afternoon. Yeah, credibility doesn't always equal popularity because if you pick the yeah. Gators every game, then um, not a whole lot of people have an issue with that, whether you're right or wrong. But uh, you got to stand. Um, by your uh, convictions, of course, and, and make exactly. the prediction. So, yeah, the prediction business is never an easy one. All right, Jackie Franchuli from uh, Gators Territory on the Rivals platform for Florida football joining us. So, Jackie, we appreciate it so much. Thanks for having me, Mark.